all today we are going to discuss about chylitis granulomatosa chylitis term means inflammation of lips and granulomatosa means due to granulomatous tissue right so the term as it suggest means chronic swelling of lip due to granulomatous inflammation it is also known as mischer melkerson rosenthal syndrome right now what is mischer chylitis or some pronounce it as chylitis both are correct i think so right so mischer chylitis means granulomatous changes confined to lips now what is granulomatous or what is granuloma basically so a granuloma is an aggregation of macrophages right basically an aggregation of macrophages right which are formed in response to an inflammation right or infection right due to our body's immune system to eradicate to isolate the foreign substance right so this is basically granulomate granuloma right so mischer chylitis is basically granulomatous changes which are confined to lips only right in chylitis also there are two terms itis stands for the inflammation and the word the prefix chylo or stands for lips so it means inflammation of lips right now melkerson rosenthal syndrome it is basically associated with chylitis the and facial palsy and plicated tongue plicated tongue is our fissured tongue so basically in this syndrome there are three things that you have to remember chylitis facial palsy and plicated tongue now the etiology part of chylitis granulomatosa the first one is genetic predisposition and the second one is dietary or other antigens right so uh, this is basically a genetic uh, syndrome you can say right now the clinical features of uh, chylitis granulomatosa it is basically episodic it occurs in episodes right in which there is a non tender swelling and enlargement of lips basically so it is not a painful kind of uh, disease or disorder you can say non tender swelling in which our lips gets swollen either one or both so in first episode which subside completely in hours or days as the disease becomes chronic it uh, its severity also increases right so in first episode it basically subsides completely in hours or days but its recurrent attacks causes persistent swelling so the swelling after that persists right it becomes permanent and there is increase in that degree also so as the disease that uh, disorder becomes chronic it causes increase in its severity right now the recurrence it ranges from days to years right attacks accompanied by fever mild constitutional symptoms in some patients only right constitutional symptoms such as headache and visual disturbances right now during the early manifestation sudden diffuse occasional nodular swelling of lips or face has been seen right it involves upper lip lower lip and cheek it may also involve eyebrow eyelids sorry not eyebrow forehead basically forehead eyelids and scalp also right when the chronicity is established the lips become enlarged and fissures and cracks can be seen on the lips right so the lips become cracked and fissured with reddish brown discoloration and scaling basically at this time the condition becomes painful 
and it has basically the lips has firm rubbery consistency right now the regional lymph nodes are also enlarged in this condition it is present from birth because it is genetic kind of a disorder loss of taste and decreased salivary flow is also seen facial palsy of lower motor neuron occurs right it is intermittent at first right during early manifestation you can say but it becomes permanent when the disease become when the disorder becomes chronic right it can be unilateral bilateral or complete there is altered lip architecture right because of this disorder basically there is no racial and sexual predilection seen age of onset is young adulthood right these were the clinical features of chylitis granulomatosa or chylitis granulomatosa right now the differential diagnosis of uh, chylitis granulomatosa first one is sarcoidal sarcoidosis and the second one is crohn's disease so to rule out whether it is sarcoidosis or chylitis granulomatosa some tests should be done first is serum angiotensin converting enzyme test second one is the chest radiograph chest radiograph should be taken right positron emission test or gallium uh, emission test some test should be performed right and to rule out whether it is crohn's disease right here also a test can be performed that is gastrointestinal endoscopy should be done so these are the differential diagnosis of chylitis granulomatosa insect bite is also a differential diagnosis now histological features of chylitis granulomatosa these are this is basically an inflammatory disorder so chronic inflammatory cells infiltrate are seen lymphocytes plasma cell histiocytes are seen right in the histological slides right non caseating granulom granuloma formation will be there with epithelioid cells and langhans type of giant cells right now the treatment firstly the patch test should be done as we know that this disorder occurs due to antigens so to rule out whether it is due to an antigen to exclude that antigen we should firstly perform that patch test right now intralesional corticosteroid injection can be given right non steroidal anti inflammatory drugs are supposed to be given mast cell stabilizers tetracyclines clofazimine these are the drugs that are supposed to be given in this disorder right lastly surgery and radiation are also helpful right thank you